My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, We've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, it's Jim Chapman reminding you that if you have not heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. One, it's free. Two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's really everything you need to make a podcast in only one place. It makes it easy, folks. So do me a favor, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey, I want to welcome everyone to a special edition of Local Leaders, the podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the stimulus package that President Trump signed on Sunday. I thought this was a great topic for us to discuss primarily uh, because Trump, well, really the bill in general, had a lot of differences between the first stimulus package, uh, especially when it relates to PPP loans. And I wanted to just kind of help where I could. I've really dived deep into this bill. And so for the next few minutes, I'm going to be covering uh, some important things for business and really some important things in general about what you can expect from this $900 billion package that was signed on Sunday by President Trump. So I'm going to jump right into it. We're going to talk about the individual payments first. And uh, I'm working with some new equipment, so hopefully this is all working somewhat correctly. Uh, In the new office uh, that we have set up for podcasting here at Local Leaders, the podcast We look forward to bringing you some great things in 2021. So let's start with individual payments. I'm sure most of you are aware uh, there was a stimulus similar to the first stimulus package released in which everybody is getting a check. Similar to the first time, the the monetary is a little bit different. Uh, It's going to be $600 checks for individual adults. Uh, or if you're a married couple, $1,200, of course. This all hinges on your 2019 tax return. Obviously, we haven't closed out 2020 yet, so they're just like the first time. They're basing everything off of the 2019 return. So it's $600 for an individual, $1,200 for a couple, and then $600 for all eligible dependents. Uh, if you have two kids and two adults, you're looking at, around, uh, well, that's $2,400. So $2,400 for a family of four. Uh, Now, there is a limitation to that with regard to uh, the amount of money in which you make. So you have to have an AGI, an adjusted gross income, 
of 151000 per year, I believe it is, uh, to qualify for the full amount. Anything over that, that amount, uh, as far as couples are concerned, uh, you lose, I think it's $5 for every $100 that you make over that amount. Uh, if you're a single, you have a cap of $112,500 based off of your uh, adjusted gross income in 20, 2019. Rather, eligible families with dependents, as I said, would receive an additional $600. Now, you also have uh, an unemployment benefit that's part of this package. A lot of people uh, wondering about that. Of course, that was a big debate the first time around because the unemployment benefits were so high that a lot of people were making more money <laughs> by staying out of work. So this time around, uh, you'll still get an enhanced uh, unemployment benefit, federal benefit of $300 per week uh, rather than the $600 a week the first time around. So it's half of what it was the first time around at $300 per week on that stimulus. Now that's in addition to what your state already gives you. So if you get, I don't know, $200 a week, typically uh, you'll get $200 still from the state and then you'll get an additional $300 from the federal government. Education resources were a part of this bill. This bill actually provided $82 billion for education, $54 billion of that for K through 12 and $23 billion for state colleges and universities such as Louisiana State University and Baton Rouge. Uh, and then $54 billion for the, for the K-12 through schools. Uh, they're going to use this. A, a lot of them are, are under financial strain right now, and hopefully that will help uh, those schools. Now they're getting uh, some funding for broadband infrastructure. This is something I actually uh, was happy to see. The issue the first time around with regard to the stay-at-home order was uh, people were, were, their kids were having to stay at home and they either had no broadband or they had very limited broadband. So they couldn't access the internet at a high speed. It was causing problems with them actually being able to attend school uh, and, and get even that type of education online because they couldn't stay on the internet. They were getting kicked off or, or uh, the, the internet was very slow. Uh, so the legislation includes $7 billion for expanding access to high-speed internet connections, and half of that will go towards helping uh, low-income families cover the cost of internet bills. It, they're going to basically give them $50 a month, up to $50 per month, uh, to apply towards the internet aspect of their bill. Uh, the deal also set aside $300 million for building out infrastructure in underserved rural areas. Uh, you know, if you live in the sticks or the boondocks somewhere and you don't get very good internet, uh, this deal set aside $300 million for, I guess, additional cell phone towers, things like that, where this, in building out infrastructure, maybe they're going to run some fiber, something like that. Uh, so that you can get broadband in your area. That was a big complaint uh, first time around. Targeted aid for small business. So, and this is what I really want to get into. It, the agreement set aside $285 million for additional loans to small business under the Paycheck Protection Program, or as all of us know it, the PPP. Uh, essentially renewing the program created under the original uh, stimulus legislation. Now, there's a lot of differences between this one and the first one, which I kind of expected because we saw some problems with uh, the first go-round. For example, first go-round, uh, they had a $10 million cap on PPP loans. They have lowered that to $2 million. This, uh, their thinking is, I believe, in the legislature that if you loan only $2 million versus $10 million, you're going to have more money to go around 
even though the stimulus is a little bit smaller than the first time around. So, uh, so that's the reason for the cap. Now, here's another change. Uh, they're only making this available to bars with less than 300 employees. And not only that, uh, you have to be a private company. If you are a publicly traded company, you will not be eligible to take the second PPP loan. Of course, that was a big issue of discussion. The first time around, you had some really successful public companies that were uh, doing some creative uh, things to qualify for these loans, and they had no limitation on whether you could be a public or private company. So I was happy to see that this is all going to be dedicated to private companies, less than 300 employees, uh, and and hopefully it'll get into the hands of, of people that need it. Um, so they're only making it available to people with less than 300 employees. Now, um, it, here's another caveat. You have to have shown a 25% drop in sales from a year earlier to your last quarter. So in other words... If you use the third quarter of 2019 and you say, you know, here's how much, say you're a restaurant, here's how much beer we sold, or a bar rather, here's how much beer we sold. And then in 2019, you sold this much beer and it was 25% less, you qualify for the loan, but you have to use the same quarter. You can't compare a summer quarter to a winter quarter. So say the second quarter to the fourth quarter in 2019 versus 2020. It has to be from the previous year's same quarter. And it has to be at least a 25% drop. So that uh, you have to show. You have to show paperwork of that. And uh, in order to even apply for the loan. So if you're, if you're a company, let's say you're private, Let's say you have 200 employees and not 300, but let's say you made a profit. You know, uh, you've been turning profits, even, or lo- your losses are only 20%. You don't, you cannot uh, qualify to, to get a loan through the PPP. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, the agreement also set aside $12 billion specifically for minority-owned business. And as I said earlier, publicly traded companies will be ineligible to apply this time around. This bill also had some funding for vaccines in nursing homes. So the legislator, legislation <laughs> set aside nearly $70 billion for a range of public health measures. They include $20 billion for the purchase of vaccines, $8 billion for vaccine distribution, and $20 billion to help states continue their test and trace programs. Uh, they gave child care some help. So the bill also provided $10 billion for the child care industry. And they want to use those funds to help providers that are struggling with reduced enrollment, obviously with the stay-at-home order. A lot of people were just keeping their kids at home, watching their kids there. Uh, and honestly, daycares and things like that were not even open during that time. Uh, but this will, this $10 billion will go towards paying staff, things like that at child care facilities. And they're also supposed to allocate some of these funds to help families that are struggling to make payments for child care. So, um, I'm sure you can get more information online on, on that. Sounds like a good thing. Uh, Support for climate measures. Kind of, uh, you know, I'm not against wind, solar, clean energy, all that sort of stuff. Just found it kind of strange that it was in a stimulus bill. Uh, But it's there. And uh, and it allocates $35 billion, with a B, $35 billion to fund wind, solar, and other clean energy products. Projects, rather. So do what you want with that. Now, they also have in this legislation a ban on surprise medical bills. So this bill makes it illegal for hospitals to charge patients for services like emergency treatment by out-of-network doctors. 
or transport in an air ambulance where patients often have no say about it. So say they're unconscious, a helicopter comes, picks them up, brings them to the hospital, and that bill is, you know, 10 grand or whatever it is, uh, that's deemed illegal now. Uh, if they don't have a choice on how they're going to be transported, uh, you can't uh, charge them for it. Hopefully that doesn't cause a situation where, <laughs> you know, they don't call a helicopter out when you really need it just because they're worried that they're going to get paid or whether they're going to get paid. But anyway, that's in the bill. Rental protections. This is something that's had a lot of debate lately. Uh, the, they basically have in this bill an extension on the moratorium on evictions for another month. So it's going to run through January 31st. Um, you know, I wonder on that side of the bill, you, you know, you got to feel for these landlords too, because if they're not getting paid their rent, um, how are they supposed to survive? So that's a, that's a question. This is, that's a very sensitive subject, but it is what it is. And right now in that bill that, that was signed by Trump on Sunday evening, president Trump, the rent uh, moratorium on evictions they have extended until January 31st or through January 31st. Food, food security. This was something I found uh, that was a good part of this bill. So the agreement increases um, uh, SNAP, which is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. They, they're increasing that by 15% beginning on January 1st. So uh, there's a 15% increase, and that's going to last six months. So that will put it through the end of June. It also provides $13 billion for increased nutrition assistance, $400 million of which will support food banks and food pantries. This is the part that I, I agree with and, and uh, I think is a good thing. So $13 billion for food banks and food pantries, uh, excuse me, $400 million of the $13 billion will support those. And they're also doing an additional $175 million earmarked for nutrition programs under the Older Americans Act. Meal on wheels, basically. And I think that's a great thing. They're going to give an additional uh, $175 million and they're going to earmark it just for programs such as Meals on Wheels. $267 billion, as I discussed, is allocated for those PPP loans and then I want to talk kind of directly about that since that's that is the business part of this bill. So 25 billion is reserved for businesses with less with 10 employees or less. First time around, a lot of companies that were four, five, eight man operations felt very left out. Um, as a matter of fact, they they did get left out in a lot of cases because a lot of the money uh, was already given to larger companies. So they're taking $25 billion and to try to rectify that, they're saying we're earmarking this only for businesses with 10 or fewer employees, obviously private companies. Now, eligible businesses that got a PPP loan the first time around can still apply for a second, uh, a second round of PPP. And here's the key. To apply for the loan, the business must have less than 300 employees and have experienced a 25% decline in gross receipts in any quarter in 2020 compared to the same quarter in 2019. We discussed this earlier, but I'll cover it again. If you had in the third quarter of 2020 a 25% loss and in the third quarter of 2019 you that's what you were comparing it to. So you lost, you, you had a 25, you were down 25% in 2020 versus 2019 in that same third quarter, you qualify. Um, but it has, you have to compare that to the same quarter. So keep that in mind. Loans cannot exceed $2 million and all loans to all borrowers from both the first and second round cannot exceed 10 million. So if you borrowed nine million the first time around, you can't borrow another two million. You can only borrow a million. 
Uh, the loan cap is two and a half times your average monthly payroll for 12 months. And it runs through the date of application. So when you apply, whatever your average monthly payroll is as of that day, you can apply for two and a half times that amount. For accommodation and, and food service businesses, however, they are increasing this to three and a half times the monthly payroll, not to exceed $2 million. So three and a half times if you're if you're a bar or a food service type business or an accommodation business like a hotel, you can get up to three and a half times the monthly payroll average. The covered period for new loans. So these PPP loans, you have to have filled out your application by March 31st of 2021. Keep that in mind. Another good thing about the PPP this time around is not-for-profit business leagues, chambers of commerce, real estate boards, uh, boards of trade, or professional football leagues, which were previously not eligible for PPP loan loans on the first go round may apply, but there's a caveat to that. You have to have 150 or fewer employees. Less than 10% of your gross receipts have to come from lobbying activities. So uh, if you have any more than 10% of your gross receipts coming coming from lobbying activities, you, you don't qualify. Uh, so uh, the good thing is the first time around with chambers and of commerce and things like that, they were kind of left out. They're not left out of this one. They are in there. Now, there's a new amount for the second draw loans that I'm going to revisit again. Uh, this is important. $2 million. That's it. You can't, uh, uh, like I say, the first time around it was $10 million. $2 million this time. So a lot of people asked, uh, asked me about loan forgiveness uh, with the new PP loans. Now, as with the previous loans, the new loans will be entirely forgiven if they're spent for the proper purposes. What is that? Well, you have to spend at least 60% of the proceeds on payroll at a minimum. You may also spend up to 40% on other qualified expenses during the cover period. So non-payroll expenses like utilities, inter mortgage interest, rent, those you can, you can spend up to 40% on that, no more than that. If you do that and you spend 60% on payroll, that loan will be forgiven. Covered worker pr protection expenditures uh, will include payments for personal protective PPE equipment, and adaptive investments to help borrowers comply with federal health and safety guidelines. Now, for any loan, um, getting back to this forgiveness, for any loan up to one hundred fifty thousand, the covered loan amount will be forgiven. But you're going to have to submit a one-page on online paper form, and I'm sure they'll have this up and ready to go. Uh, but you'll have to submit a one-page form listing the loan amount, the number of employees you retained, and the amount of the loan spent on payroll. And uh, there, once this new bill, I think they have to release this within seven days of President Trump passing it. So by Sunday of this week, that should be uh, to where you can download it online. So I tried to think about some questions, maybe like some frequently asked questions that people may have uh, regarding the stimulus checks, since that affects everybody, business owners and, and non-business owners, people that work for business owners. So I'm just going to cover those uh, frequently asked questions. When will you receive your check? Guess what? They've already, uh, today, as a matter of fact, I think last night, they started popping these in people's accounts. They started mailing out checks. I would say the week of the 4th through the 8th of January is when these are really going to start hitting a lot of people's accounts. So be on the lookout for that. As we said, as I said, $1,200 for a couple, $600 for dependents, or $600 for a single adult, and $600 for your dependents. This is all based off of your 2019 tax return. 
Well, what if the IRS doesn't have my banking information? If they don't have a direct deposit banking information for you, unlike the first time around where they had something online that you could go and actually key in your banking information, they're just going to automatically send you a check. It will not be like last time. Last time, you know, it was six, eight weeks before a lot of people got checks. Um, This time, they have a deadline. They have to have these out and really in your hands by January 15th. So... By January 15th, you should you should have been paid one way or the other. If you're not, look on the IRS's website. That's who's in control of all this, and, uh, and you can uh, get your options from there. How will they be sent? Same way as the first stimulus checks. If you got a paper check last time and the IRS does not have your account information, you're going to get a paper check this time. They're not even going to check with you. They're just mailing it wherever they mail the other one. Uh, So be on the lookout for that. Now, what if you've closed your account since the last stimulus? Well, they're going to go ahead and they're going to submit whatever information they have for you. If at that time your account is closed, they're going to get something back saying, you know, Jim Chapman's account is closed. And at that point, they're automatically going to mail you a paper check. They're trying to get these out of their hands as quickly as possible. Uh, So hopefully that answers your question on that. Do do the stimulus checks count as taxable income? No, they do not. There's no need to claim them as income, and they do not count as taxable income. Just keep in mind with these checks, when you're determining what you're going to get, you base it off of your 2019 AGI, your adjusted gross income, and that's going to tell you what you're going to get. So if you had a child in 2020, this is a good question. If you had a child in 2020, will you get a check for that child? No, you will not because the IRS doesn't know you have a child. They're basing it off of your 2019 return, but you can claim the $600 check additional with your 2020 return. IRS will have information as it updates on that. Adult dependents are disqualified from the $600. This is very unfortunate. So if you have a parent, maybe this you're taking care of this parent for whatever reason, uh, elderly parent, for example, uh, and this is different than the first go-round. They are disqualified from the $600. Uh, as a dependent. Now, I am not sure if they're going to get a check themselves in their name. I would imagine they would, but it will not go to the person taking care of them. More information on that I'm sure will be updated, but the first go around, if you're, if you were taking care of an adult dependent, you got an additional, you got additional money for that. I think it was 500 the first go around. If you owe back taxes or child support, you will still receive the $600. Even in the event of a bankruptcy proceeding, you're still going to get the stimulus check. They are garnish proof. Here's one uh, interesting for you. Prisoners will receive a second stimulus check. Interesting caveat on that. The first time around, prisoners did not receive a stimulus check. Can't say I disagree with that. We pay a lot of money to jail criminals, and, uh, well, they threw a fit because they they were a citizen and they did not get a check, and they sued the IRS because the IRS held their checks back. The IRS took them to court, and the IRS lost uh, as the Supreme Court voted that There was nothing in the bill saying they didn't get a check, therefore they get a check. Well, there's nothing in the second bill either, so to answer that question, prisoners will indeed receive a second stimulus check. Thanks for watching. I hope all this helped. I wish everyone a great uh, uh, January 1st holiday. Happy New Year to all of you. I hope everybody had a great Christmas. We've got a great 2021 coming coming to you. Tommy Sigmund will be my uh, 
my next upload. He's already been the guest, but I held him back a little bit because his story is so important. I wanted to make sure that people weren't, uh, you know, partying hard for, for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and, and didn't have time to catch his podcast, which will would typically be uploaded on uh, on Friday. So being that that's New Year's Day, uh, we're going to hold that off until Monday, but look for that. He wrote a book called The Greatest Advantage. Uh, he is a foster a child of the fo- foster system. He's 17 now, but he wrote this book when he was 15. Just an amazing individual. Going to have him on the show Monday and uh, recommend that you check that out. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you right after the holidays. Have a great day holiday. See you next time. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at selectquote.com slash commercials. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.